All right, this is the Exergo Dynamic Strength Worksheet. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to enter in the athlete's name, which I've done here, and date of the examination or assessment. Uh, following that, we're going to rename the sheet with the same criteria. And that is just so that we can track our data. Uh, remember, these assessments are only as good as our ability to track that data and see uh, if our training regimens are eliciting the responses that we're looking for and seeing what the baselines are for our athletes. Now the dynamic strength index is a ratio of peak ballistic force to maximal isometric force uh, or can be more thought of as an examination of an athlete's potential to express uh, dynamically like they would in sport uh, that ballistic force uh, in relation to what their peak force is. So first thing that we are going to do is we are going to enter in the athlete's weight. Now for best practice, it is recommended that this be taken day of the examination. So we put that in here, followed by, we are going to need a few anthropometrics from the athlete, uh, and that is due to the equations uh, and the mechanics involved in getting peak jump force from a squat jump. Now the squat jump is recommended despite the literature showing counter movement jump in the dynamic strength index and this is twofold. Uh, one, it is uh, more closely uh, affiliated with peak concentric contraction force in comparing peak concentric contraction force in the isometric mid-thigh pull. Uh, there's no elastic recoil from the stretch shortening cycle. The second is in the equations and taking the uh, research from JB Marin and Pierre Samzino in regards to peak force production from a jump requires a push off distance value uh, and that comes from the squat jump. So you're going to lay the athlete supine and you're going to take a measurement from the iliatic crest to the tip of the toe. Uh, that is your first measurement and lower limb length measurement. And the second measurement you're going to take is you're going to set the athlete in what will be their jump position. And this will be known as height initial. And will be taken from that same iliatic crest to the floor. Uh, and now this becomes imperative when looking at the push off distance, which will be kind of the keystone to the force production equation for the jump. So uh, taking these lengths, my measurements were 44, 5, and from my jump height of 33. Now, when setting this up for the athletes, you can use some sort of a marker, uh, but it is imperative that for every repetition and for every assessment, so the first test and every test thereafter, that the athlete uh, jumps from that same starting position and that'll ensure the most valid results uh, and reliable results. So uh, here I've used a band on a rack, uh, but it can be as crude as a string taped between two walls uh, or any other apparatus. Again, just some sort of a reference so the athlete knows exactly what that position is every time and the proctor is able to observe and see and ensure that that position is being reached for every jump. Uh, from there, we're going to do our squat jumps. That's hands on the hip, uh, down from that starting position, three count pause, uh, and then jump and record our values there. So my values here were 16.2, a little bit of potentiation effect, we went 16.5, and then a slight fatigue effect, and we were down to 15.9. And our peak isometric mid-thigh pulls now again, when setting that up, you can see a demonstration here. We're going to set up an apparatus. The important uh, aspects here are to have that force vector be as straight under the athlete as possible. Again, just to ensure that we are not manipulating uh, a different vector, but we're staying true when applying gravity. And the athlete is going to pull maximally from the mid-thigh position uh, for three seconds with both the jump and the mid-thigh pull in between repetitions again imperative that you take the appropriate rest recommended 
for best practice uh, anywhere between um, 90 seconds to three minutes athlete dependent. Uh, but again, we're looking for peak values, right? So here on my isometric mid thigh pull, on my first pull, I pulled 350. Second repetition uh, was a little bit of, again, potentiation, 356.7. And then for the final repetition there, a uh, little bit of, again, fatigue. And now we see 348. Two. Okay, interpreting the results and kind of what are the implications of the dynamic strength index. Again, the dynamic strength index is a representation of an athlete's expression to ballistically express their peak force potential. So in being able to assess that, what you're looking at is the relationship and the ratio of these percentages. So if you're falling below 60%, then the dynamic strength index would recommend a training emphasis of ballistic strength training. Uh, and this can come in the form of uh, plyometrics, something with some ground force reaction and ground contact uh, to kind of elicit that uh, stiffening of the tendon as well as realign the collagen fibers. Uh, that way you're getting a higher energy transfer from those tendons as well as it can be a synchronization or coordination issue from the uh, recruitment and motor neurons so we can look at such training uh, methodologies as accommodating resistance uh, where we're changing uh, load and we're forcing a little bit higher uh, recruitment patterning and synchronization. If you are sitting between like I was here 60 and 80 percent then the training recommendation is concurrent training or combination of ballistic strength training and maximal strength training. Um, and this is saying that you are moderately proficient at expressing that force but not quite totally proficient and need a little bit more improvement so this can be complex training or contrast training uh, where we're seeing a perhaps heavy potentiating lift followed by lighter loads or plyometrics to increase that recruitment and that uh, rate of force load now that the recruitment thresholds have been lowered and lastly if we are sitting higher than 80 percent uh, then the dynamic strength index is recommending that you are very proficient at expressing uh, all of the force you have the potential to generate and at that point it's recommended to raise what the ceiling of peak force isometrically is then so maximal strength training kind of raising the ceiling on what is total force production uh, as you're already expressing almost all of your total force capabilities and again this uh, for assessments as far as in regard to when to test um, at the beginning of an off season it's recommended to test get a baseline for your athletes as well as uh, any new coming athletes you might have or first time working with certain athletes and it's just going to help give a better demonstration and illustration of what that athlete's force velocity profile looks like uh, where they kind of stand and then in between training cycles just to ensure that you are eliciting the training adaptations you're targeting uh, and to kind of guide what the direction that the athlete needs when it comes to their individual training regimen heading into the next cycle.